of the items we were talking about earlier that we wanted to get into with you, uh, because I keep reminding people to check out your your two part series from three weeks ago, right on uh, Venezuela and Trump's right. move towards uh, neocon foreign policy, basically allowing Pence and and, and Pompeo and and Bolton, and, uh, Bolton to run foreign policy. And then in between that, we have Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump basically running the White House right now. You had them negotiate the, the prison reform bill, of which I, I was in favor of the prison reform bill when he was running. I right. was not in favor of the one that he actually came up with. Oh, God. It, it, it had early release for child molesters, drug traffickers, not oh, drug dealers, and uh, violent criminals. And that passed with basically the same coalition that passed the basically de facto amnesty spending bill right. uh, negotiated by Kushner. And the Koch brothers and Soros were at the table on both of those uh, bills. And now Trump is giving Ivanka $50 million, which you know it'll turn into $500 million, to go run around the world and teach women how to work. Meanwhile, here she's working with the same coalition that did prison form in the spending bill, to push for guaranteed government family leave program. So we're into full socialism now. And then on top of this, you have Trump giving his speech in Miami, uh, not only now just pushing soft regime change, basically comes out, tells him all options are on the table and the military better turn against Maduro and uh, so trying to pull Venezuela and Nicaragua and Cuba into it. And right. then today it comes out He's waging war against 70 countries that don't openly accept homosexuality. He started that one today. So now he's crusading around the, as the world police for the gay mafia. So all of a sudden now. Yes, yeah, so all of a sudden now we went week. from drain the swamp and no regime change to invade the world, invite the world, and, and if not, sanction them, blow them all up. Great. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm so glad I voted for him. I'm not I voting for him again. Trump is trying to put together a, a North American version of OPEC, right? And to lessen the effect of OPEC by, by continuing to try and break OPEC up or at least coalesce it around a small group of countries that he can control via the petrodollar um, and Saudi Arabia's, uh, you know, heavy-handed tactics to hold on to the Gulf Cooperation Council, you know, overthrow Iran, subjugate Iraq continued. Oh, by the way, today they just came out and, and said that they've cut a deal with Iraq to relocate all the troops that we're going to pull out of Syria, that we're not pulling out of Syria, but if they we do pull them out, they're going to go to Iraq. So they're not coming home. They're just <laughs> going to Iraq. Because, you know, John Bolton wants more troops in order to invade Iran for Israel. Ugh. So, um, because, you know, he never met a war he didn't like, except for Vietnam, the one he did refuse to go to. <laughs> so... Wait, did we just blame Israel? No, oh, okay, no we cool. blame John Paul. Oh, okay, yeah, he sucks. Okay, go go ahead. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I think I was fair to Israel I, as best as I could be to today on with Ron Paul, which is to say, you know how I feel about that. I mean, I I have a, a very, I, I could be generous or I can be cynical, depending on how, you, you know, depending on my mood with, with Israel. Right. Um, I think that the best I think their best strategic ploy for the last 40 years is to hitch their ride to the biggest wagon that in, in the world. And that's us. And if they can make us do what we want them to do, well, great. And if they they can't, then, you know, well, OK, they'll you know, that's that's it just makes sense from a, a strategic and tactical standpoint from their uh, their point of view. I just, you know. So and when you look at it, whose fault is it? Theirs or ours? No, nah, it's just, they're just ours. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, you know, so I mean, if I were them, I would do the same freaking thing. So you know, exactly. all white guys, get over yourselves. But you know, yeah, I mean, yeah. So whatever, we can we can we can argue the merits of it all later, after we like avert World War Three. Um, so. <laughs> this point so that's really what trump is trying to do it's energy dominance policy he wants to pull the empire home or at least he says he wants to pull the empire home um bring the troops home from overseas and some of the conflicts overseas and all of this stuff and but replace the the physical empire with a financial one mm -hmm. if you control the marginal barrel of oil if you control the last barrel of oil produced which is the one that sets the price because the marginal production of and the marginal unit 
the last unit of any good that's produced is the marginal unit, and that's the one that sets the price. So when I and I, I drop into economic speak, I, when I use the word marginal barrel of oil or marginal dollar printed or whatever, that's what I'm talking about. Right, the mm. marginal apple produced, right? It's, that's the, the one at the margin is the one that sets the price, because everything's a big auction and everything's up for bid. Mm -hmm. Like it or not, socialists, that's the way the world works. That's the way humans operate. So um, that's what he's trying to do, or at least that's what he wanted to do. And the and the neocons that are in charge now are just holding him to that and using him in every way imaginable. He's too freaking stupid, frankly. And uh, just not a deep enough thinker, and not a and not a strong enough personality to know that you know, they have, everything is leverage and everything's transactional. He can just mm -hmm. like like okay, so um, Bolton's going to do this, and I can't stop it, so I'm going to use it to the best of my advantage to get leverage over somebody, no matter what it does in the long run. I think he's got a very weird. Um, I think he's got a, a fundamentally sound premise, which is that we've been spending money we shouldn't have been spending for all these years. But I think his and you know and he's he's got a logical like, kind of kind of set of set of precepts that make sense to him, right? right? That are internally consistent. They're wrong, but they're internally consistent because mm. that's who he is, and he's because he's Donald Trump, and he's not a deep thinker. Right, <laughs> and I tell and I tell people all the time on this subject, and I brought it up with you before. I mean, Trump is somebody since I think he was thirty five years old. He can go back and find find interviews where he rails against OPEC. Right, so he's always been on his radar. Right. I mean, yeah. no, he, I mean, he's uh, these all these ideas about him, uh, all these policy ideas of his were hatched in the eighties. Uh, why do you think he's got John Bolton, uh, you know, in the White House? Because John Bolton's ideas on, you yeah. know, foreign yeah. policy were hatched in the eighties as well. So they're right. like a match made heaven. Yep. Yep. And then one of the things that you brought up, I, I can't remember if it was on Ron Paul or in your uh, Ann Coulter video, you had mentioned that you think. Uh, Trump is basically just in 2020 campaign mode now. Oh yeah, that's that's definitely. I brought it. I think it brought it up in both places. To be honest with you. Yeah, which which I uh, mentioned on the show on here the other day. Yeah, it, yeah, it, you, know, you and I talked about this the last time we were on. That that's what you know. You 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 actually the one who brought it up. I've been riffing off of that. So. Oh um, well, well, I was going to say it, it happened the, the morning of the state of emergency speech. Right. Um, there were two people that were on two different radio shows who never liked each other. It was B Bannon on one. That was basically calling for him to have a, a pocket veto, push for a CR, take the 10 days, come back with a veto, force them to vote with a veto-proof majority, and uh, and cancel out your veto. Glenn Beck was on another network saying the same thing, but he was on with O'Reilly. And Bill O'Reilly, as much as I've never liked him, I call you know he's a he's a, he's a scumbag. And yeah, he's, and he's a lightweight. Yeah, and a Fox Fox conservative, and you you know who knows, but he's a little. But Bill O'Reilly has Trump Trotskyite. Yeah, but he has Trump's ear. He's always had Trump's ear. He just talked about a book that he finished up, so he was spending a lot of time around Don Jr. and Trump. Right. And what he said to Beck, as Beck was arguing for what I wanted, uh, he said it's not going to happen. Trump is done with, he called them right, uh, uh, extremist right-wing zealots. He said Trump is done with Ann Coulter and them. He's done with the Freedom Caucus. They brought him nothing but pain. And now this is 2020. He's not going to get the wall, but he's going to frame the wall. He's going to sell the base on the O'Reilly, basically. And it was actually, as I tell my MAGA friends and everybody, oh, they go, oh, screw O'Reilly. I'm like, no, 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 screw O'Reilly. But he has the president's ear. You right. need to listen to him because it was actually the one explanation of everything that's happening that makes the most sense.